Good morning, everyone. I want to thank everyone for uh, their donation of clothing, for helping us. On Thursday night, we packed them, so they're all ready to go to Purple Heart and the Man's Rescue Mission. So thank you very much for all that you did for us. Um, to the board members and the other people I talked to, this board meeting this week will be at 6.30 because the Carillon representatives are coming in and we're going to have a presentation. So thank you for all that are attending that. Meatball sale, we have meatball sign-up sheets in the back. We need volunteers to help. So anybody that can help, it's greatly appreciated. And this week we do the food pantry on Saturday. And I have to thank the people that came forward to help us do that. And also the volunteers that came forth to help us deliver. So thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. This is a day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and we welcome each one of you here to worship this morning. We are welcoming those who are watching us via live stream on Facebook and those who are watching it will watch us later on on YouTube. We welcome you all today too. Today we are celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. I ask those of you who are at home partake of your bread and your drink so that you can continue to join with us for that. One announcement that I have um, is that we are having Harvest Home this year. It will be the last Sunday in September. Last Sunday in September. Um, hmm, I don't think there's anything else. Let's all rise for our invocation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground on that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the, Lord, is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. You are God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Please join me for our first hymn. Let us break bread together.
And you may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Just give me a second here. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 4 through 7a. Joy of the redeemed. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God will come, he will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lamb leap like a deer and the mute tongues shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and the streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass, reeds, and papyrus will grow. Here ends this first reading. Second reading is from James II, verses 1 through 10, and then 14 through 17. Favoritism forbidden. My brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in shabby clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing the fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet, you have, not, you have discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts. Listen, my dear brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have insulted the poor. It is not the rich who are exploiting you. Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are slandering the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the laws of the lawbreakers. For whomever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking it all. What good is it, my brothers, if man claims to have faith but no deeds? Can, can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If you say to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but do nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself is not accomplished by actions. It is dead. Here ends our second reading. gospel is written in the gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter, verses 24 through 37. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it. Yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, 
For such a reply you may go, the demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hand on them. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatheta, which means be opened. At this the man's ears were opened. His tongue was loosened and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be given to you from Almighty God and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let me open with a story, a true story for you. It's a story of a, a, a mother named Brandy and her adult son, whose name was Vernie. Her adult son suffered from cerebral palsy. Well, Brandy and Vernie had just relocated to a new community, and she knew that one of the best ways she could get connected with the community was find a church home. So each Sunday, she would get herself ready and put Vernie in his wheelchair, and they would worship at a different church. Then the days between Sundays were spent in prayer about whether or not that particular church was the right fit. Well, at some point, she felt that she had found her church home, and she approached the pastor about whether she could join. Well, the conversation was great. She immediately felt loved and welcomed. She learned about Sunday school options, and she heard about the different opportunities to serve in the church. And before the meeting was over, she asked another quick question. She said, asked, when do you think you could baptize my son, Verney, and when will he be able to start taking communion? Well, the pastor stared back at her with this puzzled look on his face. Ma'am, he began, I will not baptize your son, nor will I offer him communion. He can't understand what they mean, and honestly, there would be no point. Now, keep all this in mind. Jesus entered the house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet word about him had spread so quickly that he couldn't escape notice. So a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard that Jesus had entered the town and she went. Up to this point, Jesus, as a Jew, had been ministering to the Jews. He had read to them from the Torah, the law, he had proclaimed God's reign like one of the prophets from old, and he lived his life according to the law. This woman who came to beg at Jesus' feet was not Jewish. She was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. But the woman was prostrate on the floor, begging Jesus to cast out the demon from her daughter. And Jesus said, first, let the children eat all they want, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. So just imagine that mother, Brandy, with a handicapped son asking for her son to be given communion, and you can get a sense of what was taking place in front of Jesus. This unnamed Syrophoenician woman was driven by something more than just proper etiquette and expectation. She was so desperately afraid for her daughter's life 
that she was willing to beg at the feet of Jesus. Jesus, a man from a completely different culture and completely different way of life. Yet Jesus' response to the woman is one that many of us would rather, I'd say, overlook. We don't hear Jesus immediately proclaim the grand scope of God's kingdom, do we? Jesus doesn't reach out for a blessing. Instead, he calls the woman a dog and tells her that his mission is for the Jews alone. Now this Syrophoenician woman with no worth, no status, does not go away quietly. She perseveres. She holds her ground and she pushes back to Jesus and says, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. This woman understands the way God's upside-down kingdom is supposed to work. She believes in God's goodness, and she yearns for the kind of love that goes beyond all the borders of culture, all the borders of race. So in response to her declaration, Jesus said, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. But the story isn't over yet. We're told that Jesus continues on his way, and people then brought to him a deaf man with a speech impediment. The deaf man was brought into a private place away from the crowds, and Jesus used the power within him to open the man's ears and to release his tongue. And in response then, Jesus ordered the people to tell no one what he had done. But the more he ordered that, the more zealously they proclaimed it. We don't hear how radical this is. You see, during the first century, people who were blind, were deaf, even this woman, this Gentile woman, would have had zero status. And they would have been largely ignored. Even if they had family, they would have been largely ignored. In those days, people were afraid of anything that was different than their status quo. But you know, Jesus embraced that because the story of the Syrophoenician woman and the deaf man are really intricately linked because they demonstrate Jesus' willingness to upset the expectations of the world and welcome all into God's love. Now after that meeting that Brandy had with the pastor, the meeting where he told her there was no point for him to baptize or share communion with her son, well, she abandoned that church. But she persevered in searching for a church home, and she asked lots of questions, but she was afraid. She was afraid that another church would see her son as worthless, invisible, and really unworthy of their time. So Jesus' actions in these two stories from Mark chapter 7 are really are worth, worth our careful consideration. Jesus showed how a worthless, unnamed Gentile woman, an ignorable old deaf man, are actually vital and worthy people in the kingdom of God. This story forces us to reopen our eyes and ears to the fact that there are no barriers, no barriers between God and humankind. In Romans chapter 8, Paul wrote this. He said, For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels, nor demons, neither present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, or anything else in all creation will, able, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we were told that Brandy was afraid about how another church would respond to her. But she did find a church community that welcomed both she and her son Verney with open arms, Bernie was baptized, 
And within this loving communion, community, nurture and care, he was granted his place at God's table. When God came in the form of flesh in Jesus Christ, the world was turned upside down. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus time and again demonstrated that all people are worthy of God's love. And the operative word is all. His work and his words testified to the fact that the Lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger, and abounding in love. Jesus did everything he could to embody how the Lord is good to all. God's compassion is over all creation. Jesus even went so far as to carry a cross on his back to live under the ridicule of the world and die then to ultimately defeat death. We remember and experience how far God was willing to go for our sakes. And we remember that in the sacrament, the bread, and the cup of Holy Communion. When we are invited to this table to feast on the bread and blood of Jesus, as you are all invited, we are like the Syrophoenician woman. We are like the deaf man. And we, and we are like Brandy and Verney. We all come with our shortcomings and our brokenness. We all share disappointments and failures, but when we stand before the throne, we are all made new in God's love. And that's crucial. Because national and world events spin around us, and we don't pretend to completely understand them. This pandemic rears up and confounds us, and scares us, and in less than one week is the 20th anniversary of the horrific events which unfolded September 11th, 2001. Those memories still jar us, still shake us. So I don't know what you might be going through in your life right now, because many of us are remarkably reluctant, if downright, if not downright afraid, to share where we feel broken in our lives. We really don't want to admit our shortcomings, and we really don't want to admit our fears. But let me tell you, God's grace is sufficient on its own to reconcile wounded hearts and wounded lives and souls with God. God's love is boundless. Boundless enough to heal even those who might never, ever become Christians. God's mercy is abundant enough to include even those who will never be included in the corporate life as children of the children of God. God's salvation is powerful enough to save even those who receive only the crumbs from the table. God's grace reaches even those who are not worthy to receive. And God's grace claims them as worthy of salvation, worthy to be called children of God. Remember the strong and resilient perseverance of the Syrophoenician woman who gave voice to God's power in the world. Remember this deaf man whose life was forever changed as he was welcomed back into the heart of his community. And remember Brandy and her son Verney, who were given hope in the midst of their fear. And remember, too, that you are welcome at the Jesus' table, where the limitless, the boundless, and the universal love awaits us. Let us break bread together. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join with me. Our next hymn is In Remembrance. Please rise for this hymn.
Now please say with me a statement of our belief, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven as seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And you may be seated. As children and heirs of God's promise, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship. Enliven your church. Guide all evangelists, preachers, prophets, and missionaries who seek to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless all who advocate for the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, you show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world. Unite us in seeking the health, safety, and dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, you accompany those who are most in need. Shelter all fleeing violence or persecution. Protect any who are in danger and sustain them through uncertain and unstable times. Today we pray especially for Carson Barron, Kaylin Butler, Butler, Denise Campbell, Denise Campbell Eric, Conover, Eric Conover, Leanne Christina, Leanne Christina <laughs> Dylan Crowley, Donna Dubik, Charlotte Pritz, Charlotte Pritz. Lillian Gernert, Mark Haas, Mark Haas, Diane Heckman, Diane Heckman. Linda, Hauser, Linda Hauser, Austin Klein, Austin Klein. Pastor, David Noble, Pastor David Noble, Tim Lehman, Tim Lehman. Gail, Lofman, Gail Lofman, Francis McHugh, Francis McHugh. Julie Meckes, Larry Meckes, Donald, Donald Miller, Lamont Miller, Lamont Frank Niedespall, Gail, Gail Petrisky, Darlene Phillips, Darlene Phillips Earl, Pratt, Earl Pratt, Vicki Pratt, 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 Barbara Renninger, Barbara Renninger Harry, Rausch, Harry Rausch, Sally Rausch, Sally Rausch Lisa Sanchez, Lisa Sanchez, Maisie Schock, Maisie Schock Richard Shook, Richard Shook Curtis, Steigerwalt, Curtis Steigerwalt, Junior Steigerwalt, Junior Steigerwalt, Steigerwalt Sue Stroll, Sue Stroll Jean, Swartz, Jean Swartz, Diane Therian, Diane Therian Jeff, Tierney, Jeff Tierney, Kevin Tyson, Kevin Tyson Shirley, Walk, Shirley Walk, Julie Wood, Kristen Wood, Wood, Gary Zayner, Gary Zayner Marlon Zayner, Zayner, and the friends and family of Barry Andrew. 
Lord, in your mercy. Holy Spirit, you support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Father, you embrace all who have died in the faith and brought them into your glorious presence. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let your blood and mercy pour. Let your blood and body broken be to me, O Lord. Be to me, O Lord. I lived because you died. Precious Lord, you came to save me. Oh, you gave me life. Oh, you gave me life. Now I give myself, I give myself to. You are everything I need. You're the air I breathe, the melody I sing. You are all I want to see. You're my holy king. You're everything to me. Have my gift, O oh blessed one. All repentance I can offer. Love is surely one. Love is surely one. By the thorns that crown your brow, I can claim your love unfailing. I'm in freedom now. I'm in freedom now. So I give myself, I give myself to you. You are everything I need. You're the air I breathe, the melody I sing. You are all I want to see. You're my holy king. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. I give myself, I give myself to you are everything I need. You're the air I breathe, the melody I sing. You are all I want to see. You're my holy king. You're everything. You are everything I need. You're the air I breathe, the melody I sing. You are all I my holy king, you're everything to me. You're everything to me. You're everything to me. Gracious God, accept the tributes we bring and bless our endeavors in your name. With our voices, we will sing your praises. With our hands, we will care for the suffering. With our feet, we will seek to walk faithfully. With our hearts, we will love you completely. All that we have, we return to you, who endow us with beautiful gifts.
And now as we enter into the sacrament of Holy Communion, know that everyone here is welcome at the table at Zion Stone. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it and gave it, to his, gave it to his disciples to eat. And he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of this, do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks to the cup, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples to drink. And he said, take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of this, do this for the remembrance of me. Consecrate these gifts of bread and drink and bless us as we receive them at this table. We may offer you our faith and praise. We may be united with Christ and one another and we may continue to be faithful in all things and the strength Christ gives us. We offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Please say with me now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Blessed Assured.
come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling you. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ.
altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ Jesus Christ. 